You are about to enter the Chrome Dome. All right, Chrome Domers, welcome back. It's Old Ball Guy here, and what a week it has been. I mean, it's been a short week because our last episode was on Tuesday when I got back from vacation. Actually, I think it was Wednesday when I got back from vacation. Um, in any case, recent uh, time period, and <clears throat> got back, got COVID, got better, piece of cake. Thank goodness I was vaccinated and things were good and very, very mi minor issues. And then, like, Star Wars Galaxy Heroes just exploded. Oh, my goodness. We had uh, all the assault battles come through, which was really disappointing for this account because the only one that I could do was the, the only one I could do successfully was the Jedi, uh, the one that required Jedi, which I got through the first three tiers of it, which was pretty freaking amazing because... I got seven star Yoda yes uh, th this week, so that gave me seven star Bestia, seven star Yoda, and just blasted through the first three levels. We did not clear the mythic level by any means, uh, but still, being able to get through the first three levels was a huge boost in shard currency and in um, uh, credits because they give you all kinds of, of bonus stuff the first time. I also got a bunch of Grievous shards out of that, because we were fighting Separatists, and <clears throat> that let us unlock Grievous, and then, of course, they gave us free Grievous shards for just playing the game, basically, because it was in all the regular energy nodes, so I was farming the heck out of those, got, I almost have five-star Grievous now, which is freaking amazing, considering we have mal uh, Malevolence coming in the not-too-distant future, so that's great. And in addition to that, Credit Heist came in, and I was able to, with um, a team that I'll show you later, clear third tier of that and got 1.2 million and 2.5 million out of those two clears. So that was huge in allowing me to set up my teams and getting ready for level 85. As you can see, we are at level 82 now. We had... We've been focusing outside of our Elite Eight, working on our Rebels and working on our Empire, getting them up and ready for their seven-star challenges and uh, also for GAC. And so, as you can see, our Toon GP jumped up 30,000 this week, almost exclusively outside of the top eight. Um, and our Ship GP jumped up 14,000. And overall, we gained 44,000, which is one of our bigger gains. It's a great week for that. Fleet Arena, once again, we have been able to maintain top 10 at any time. If we have the time to play the hour before fleet payout comes in, we can get top 10 every time. Um, if we don't, we end up top 20, which is not great. It's a 100 crystal difference, but it's nice that we're strong enough now that we don't even have to play to stay in top 20 and get 100 crystals out of Fleet Arena. Um, I have broken into top 5 once, but... It's really hard. <laughs> the top five guys are really strong. But we're getting there. We're much stronger. And we're really getting left alone these days. Our, our squad has gotten quite quite powerful. And they really are kind of avoiding us and hitting other people that they like to hit better. Um, cleared all seven stages of uh, all, all seven days of Galactic War. Once again, up to 66 wins. Interesting, if you notice back here on week five, since week five, Actually, let's go back to week four. Since week four, we are now 61 and three. 61 out of 64 clears in Galactic War since week four. Pretty freaking amazing. I mean, the Jedi have really, once Bestia got into that Jedi, just crazy good clearing through that. All right. Let's take a look at our major accomplishments this week. Um, we've been working on a lot of things. I already mentioned Bestia to 7, Yoda to 7. Finished off our Grandmaster Yoda unlock at level 82, for those keeping track at home. Uh, First Order Officer is at 6. Kylo Ren is at 6. Phasma has reached 7, but I haven't paid for the upgrades yet. And outside of that, nobody else has done much. Oh, that should be a 6 right there for Palpatine, because he is 6. And um, over here... We are still working through our stuff. We have reached 82, so we have unlocked Kylo Ren's command shuttle. And we are now farming that in our farms, which we'll talk about later. And um, Slave 1 is uh, actually at 5. Just hit 5 this morning. I just haven't uh, updated him yet. And Ty Advanced is... Uh, also moving along quickly. And over here, Sunvac is almost to seven, and Vulture Droid has hit five. So that's great for Vulture Droid and allowed us to make some progress that I'll show you about in just a minute here as well. Boba Fett is unlocked, Cat Bane is unlocked, and uh, Django. And 
So everything is moving along very well. Most of our farming is going into ships right now for the most part. So let's take a look at farming first. So if I go in here, our main farms are um, in the ships. So we've got Vulture Droid, Ty Advanced, who is moving along. Slave One, who just passed pa just passed into five star territory today. Uh, Xanadu Blood, Houndstooth, uh, who is just smoking along. Really, he's been doing really well. And Hyena Bomber, that's almost unlocked. We also are finish trying to finish up Sunfax. Uh, Geonosian Starfighter. He's at 79 out of 180. Um, and that's it for our farms for the most part. And as you can see, though, this is a lot of farming. Oh, yeah. Kylo Ren's Command Shuttle should also be marked up here, too. Where are you at, buddy? Where are you at? Kylo Ren's Command Shuttle. Uh, we've got him marked on the other side, but we don't have him marked here. So, mark you. And you can see he's 5 out of 8. He's got a long way to go. We are going to need all these guys to unlock exec, uh, um, um, Finalizer. So the other thing is, you'll notice that we got Executress to six stars this morning. Uh, so we picked up the the the, the uh, three times a week uh, challenge came up to get Executress, and we had the the materials now, which we acquired. Uh, five dark, five five star dark side. So when Vulture Droid hit five star, I was able to get Executrix to six stars, and I just have to get the million credits, which right now I'm at nine hundred and ninety-eight thousand, uh, to uh, bump him up. But that'll help a lot in getting the speed, because if you can get that, uh, that the the Thai assault, whatever it's called. The uh, this one right here, the Imperial Assault with the Tie Fighters uh, coming through, you'll be able to get there. You'll be able to do a lot of damage with him. I just need a million credits to get him upgraded, and keep working on that guy. <clears throat> so the other thing I want to talk about today is we are now um, about three weeks away from 85. Um, we'll hit 83, as you can see here. We are basically 3,500 away, so we'll hit 83 probably tomorrow night after refresh, um, and then it's about a week to 84 and a week to 85, so we're basically two and a half weeks away. I wanted to go ahead and start prepping for GAC. So, my assumption is that we are going to be dropped out into the lowest division in GAC, and as do in doing so, we're going to need three offensive and three defensive teams. So I started pl planning this out. Uh, we mentioned before that Geonosian Brood Alpha unlocks at level 83. I can start farming him. So he will be my cantina farm as soon as this happens, and I'll be farming out with this. That'll be my primary defensive team will be the Geos. They're very strong, and they're very tough for people to beat without a really strong team. Um, hopefully, by the time I hit 85 in the next two and a half weeks, Padme will also be unlocked, probably with the Geos. Um, I have not been able to do it with Newt lead yet. Maybe I'll try again at 83 when they get a, few, a little bit higher. But once uh, Padme is unlocked, then we'll go through with this. That's the Padme team that I plan to run to start with. Now, very soon, uh, down here on the Jedi team, um, I've tossed in whatever I could find, basically. So General Kenobi will unlock fairly soon and when Kenobi unlocks I'm actually going to move so here's the problem I want to run the Qui-Gon Jinn Omicron it's very very strong and my Jedi's are one of my top teams so I'm pretty sure I can get pretty solid holds with the Omicron Qui-Gon Jinn with all the offensive boost and everything else and Jedi Knight Anakin being strong but I don't know how to put that all together and make Padme work without JKA so JKA and Qui-Gon Jinn are really the combo that works well with uh, the Jedi, but I don't want to completely break up Padme. So I'll figure it out, but to start with, this is the team. Um, when I get Kenobi, we'll kick Jedi Counselor out. We'll move Grandmaster Yoda down here and put Kenobi up here with Padme. So, um, so this is just a placeholder for now. On the Rebel side, Commander Luke Skywalker should be unlocked in the next week or two as soon as I get the rest of these guys to seven stars. And this is the current plan for the CLS Rebels team. Uh, they will be a defensive team, most likely. And um, 
we'll just toss them out there. But Han Solo is uh, unlocked, as you can see here, and moving him up. And these, of course, are the guys that I'm using to unlock Luke. So it's not great, but, you know, it's still CLS. He's still pretty strong, and it's nice to have him early in the game. Uh, the Empire Sith team is... This is the plan for these guys. Uh, Darth Sion is on the Kylo Ren command shuttle node, so he's being far passively farmed uh, with the shuttle. And Mar Jade is a nice low-level boost. So as you can see, though, I need to get... <clears throat> I have a lot of money to spend to get these guys up. But this is the plan. I really have to start raising up these levels on these guys and getting them up to... Hopefully, Gear 8 is kind of where I want to try to get them to be competitive with. But, you know, even if I go out just like this, fine. I mean, you know, it's not bad for a defensive team. It's fine. Um, and then, uh, as I mentioned, we have Grievous here. He's going to be paired together with these droids to make a decent team. And, uh, once again, lots of leveling up to do. But this is the plan for... What am I at now here? Uh... We have one, two, three, four, five. That's our first six teams. Uh, these are random guys that I don't, that I have still that I can toss into something or do something with. They just aren't in teams right now. Um, actually, probably Newt should go in here with the droids. Uh, the the Grievous Newt team is actually really good, especially with uh, Magna Guard, because uh, uh, there's a trick with that. So I'll probably kick uh, Edgy 80. IG-88 or IG-86 out of this but and put a newt in here and <clears throat> then my two first order teams which I've gone ahead and set up uh, for the future as my seventh and eighth or seventh and eighth teams here is um, KRU lead and General Hux lead with their appropriate most effective setups before Supreme Leader Kylo Ren come in obviously as these are going to be farmed up and uh, set up, so I'm going to have all these guys at relic levels. So I want to go ahead and get them planned out. And what I'll probably do is uh, work on one team at a time and bring them up as they, as we get everybody unlocked and get them set up. So just a little bit of insight into what I'm thinking for GAC. Hopefully, I can have enough of these teams ready. But like you can, like you see, I still have to unlock this one, unlock Padme unlock CLS, level them up to level 80. What my goal is is level 80, gear 8 for the teams that are not the top teams. So the Jedi team will be really strong with Bastia. The Padme team will be really strong. I'll level him up, uh, her up, and then the Geo team will be strong. Those are going to be my three really strong teams. Outside of that, everybody else is going to be around gear 8 and uh, level 80 to compete. Empire, Empire team will be pretty good, but then I'm trying to get Grievous up pretty high because Grievous alone can completely dominate a match if you're not ready for him, even if his droid buddies are not very good. So you just you just kick his metal, Metalloid Monstrosity ability, which is right here, that says um, sort of every character's turn if Grievous is below 25% health, he dispels all debuffs on himself, inflicts marked on the health of the destroyed ally until the end of the turn. So and then down here, when you get his level 8, when you max it out, whenever a droid or separatist ally is defeated, dispels all buffs on himself, resets all ability cooldowns, and gains a bonus turn. So every time he goes, he gets stronger, and he is cons consistently coming out with that AoE that he has and will just completely devastate teams if you don't one-shot Grievous, which if he's the strongest guy on the team, then that's pretty strong in and of itself. So... Um, with that, that is where we're at. Everything's looking great. Everything's really moving along well. Looking forward to level 83, being able to start on the Geonosian Brood Alpha Farm, try to get Padme unlocked, finishing off the Rebel team, as you can see here in the squads. My uh, The Rebel team to unlock... Uh, to unlock... What's his face? Uh... To unlock Palpatine is uh, four purchases away in the guild store. Three for Obi Wan and one for Luke Skywalker. That will give me both CLS at the, the CLS 
qualifications and the Palpatine qualifications. And once I get the Palpatine qualifications, I am a little ways away because Vader is still 60 shards away from hitting six stars. And so is Snow Trooper, but I could spend some money on Snow Trooper and get or, or some time on Snow Trooper to get him up. But Vader, I can't really hard farm because he's not available except in the Fleet Store and in Achievements. So we probably won't have seven star. Oh, we can't get can't get CLS until we have seven star R2, which we can't get till we have seven star Vader. So that may be a problem for us going into our first round of GSC. We'll see how far we get. It's worth keeping an eye on. In the meantime, until next week, OBG out.